Yeah, he's not. He's not gonna me. Got one. Got, Got two. Good play. The question I've been asked pretty frequently is, what is a replacement for the Astro Horizon shotgun? For those unaware, this is a Trials Reward that is an aggressive frame shotgun that features the perk Quick Draw. So this is arguably, if not undoubtedly, the best shotgun in the game. So what could possibly replace it or come close? For those who recognize the gun, the opening footage gave it away. The answer is the Parcel of Stardust, which is a weapon that is a reward from Gambit and the Menagerie. So you can actually farm it for random rolls. The best roll, in my opinion, takes a combination of handling and range into account. For the barrel, you want corkscrew rifling because it boosts both handling and range, just that perfect amount so that when threat detector is active, it feels like quick draw. The way threat detector works is if an enemy is within 14 meters, which is always shotgun distance, then you get a boost to handling. That exact amount it boosts maxes it out with corkscrew rifling. So effectively, what we have here is a shotgun that is min-max for a combination of handling, range, and rate of fire. The magazine perk that I prefer is Assault Mag for a faster rate of fire, and the second perk where I have Auto Loading Holster, this can be really anything, but Rampage or Moving Target is probably going to be the most bang for your buck. When comparing both shotguns, the Astro Horizon has a much better one-hit kill distance, but the Parcel has a better base rate of fire. You should always take this into account when approaching shotgun duels. For example, if you're using a parcel sliding into an Astral Horizon, you will probably lose if you're within one hit kill distance. So instead, slide slightly outward so they do not one shot you, but you can double tap them before they get their second shot off. I should, I got. I'm trying to move tornado wire and help. I should, I got. I'm trying to move tornado wire and help. I didn't plan for this background gameplay to sync up so perfectly with what I'm talking about, but you saw it. I went out a very wide approach, he could not one tap me, but I could double tap him. It worked perfectly. But, it's not a perfect approach. The Astro Horizon is just flat out better, and the reason for this is because of Quick Draw. What you're going to do with Astro Horizon is slide out wide, same as the parcel, put in as much damage as you can do with your shotgun, and then clean up with a primary hipfire hand cannon to the body. Nine times out of ten, you will probably kill them before the parcel can even consider double tapping. But, here's where the real advantage of parcel comes in. If you slide into a room point blank, you have a faster double kill potential than the Astral Horizon. Of course, it's not by much because the aggressive frame has an inherent rate of fire boost after a kill, but at least that initial kill might be a double tap and then a single tap to the second. Ultimately, what I'm trying to get across in this video is that the Parcel of Stardust isn't exactly a replacement, but rather the next best thing to Astro Horizon. I would advise just ignoring the Kinetic Shotgun altogether, and maybe going for the Mindbender's Ambition Energy Shotgun, which is obtained from the Hull Lair Nightfall. So it has to be on rotation for you to even obtain it, but at least it's from a PvE activity. Now for pure free-to-play accounts, other than Astro Horizon, this is the best shotgun for you. The reason that it's unlikely for a free-to-play account to have Astro Horizon is because of power level enabled in Trials. So if you don't have a high enough power level and the shotgun isn't on three wins, it is very unlikely to get the shotgun. For the majority of the PvP population out there, I wouldn't advise going for a perfect min-maxed best-in-slot shotgun. It's just not worth it. We're talking milliseconds here. And if you have the skill to take advantage of those milliseconds, you probably have the skill to get the shotgun in the first place. We're going to switch the background footage to a trials match where somebody on the enemy team has a perk for perk perfect shotgun, but he can't really take advantage of it, and this was the result. It hurts me to look at Osmosis' as shotgun. <laughs> Does he have quick shot opening shot? It's, it's perfect. It's legitimately perfect. Every single oh. shot. Oh. Oh god, oh. please. Oh god. I can't wait to get hit by 16 meters by that shotgun. They're pushing, Titan's pushing quick. Oh my god, he's oh balls me. Now he's backing up to prisons. One more, yeah, I see him. Titan pushing aggressive. Got him. To be bridge. Bridge dead. dead. Oh, he's, he's on my X still. Good job. All right, so I will label this match. The shotgun does not make the player. And I stand by that message. The shotgun roll does not make the player you make the shotgun roll work to its maximum effectiveness. The same could be said for almost every weapon in the game. For example, I use the Tatara Gaze Sniper Rifle, and I'm one of the few players that I think would value having max reload on it 
whereas other people might not notice because maybe they're not setting up these kill chain potentials where that millisecond of extra reload makes all the difference. Don't get me wrong though, when skill based matchmaking is really brutal and pits me against tournament players every other game, well those milliseconds matter and they especially matter if your opponent has one and you do not. But the case again is that just doesn't happen to the majority of PvP players, so I don't see it smart recommending a perk for perk perfect gun for every situation. In Destiny, you can get away with 8 out of 10s, sometimes 9 out of 10s, hell, you can get away with a 7 out of 10. Those are very easy to get. Though I would like to see a change to the loot structure that benefits both casual and hardcore players alike. My suggestion would be a two-method approach to obtaining a curated role that the player base would deem an 8 out of 10, 7 out of 10, or a 9 out of 10 weapon in strength. The way you obtain it is one of two ways, either a very long quest line or a much shorter, difficult endgame challenge in PvP or PvE. Doing so would make it so you never feel like a victim of the RNG loot system and allow you to actually play the game to the most of your capabilities, while also still providing that 9 out of 10 and 10 out of 10 roll to chase if you really want to pull the slot machine. Funny enough, I've been playing a lot of Phantasy Star Online 2. This is an MMO action RPG with a very similar setting and story to Destiny 2 even. Well, of course this sounds like an ad reading for Raid Shadow Legends, let me tell you, I would not be playing Destiny 2 right now. I wouldn't even have touched Destiny 1 if I did not play Halo the first person shooter made by Bungie, and if I didn't play Fantasy Star Online Episode 1 and 2 on the GameCube way back in the day. So to me, Destiny is actually a pretty close to perfect mix of the two types of games. Consider that Fantasy Star Online Episode 1 and 2 launched all the way back on the Dreamcast and had fully functional online capabilities even back then. And the crazy thing is a lot of these game solutions and whatnot that I've talked about for years took root in Fantasy Star Episode 1 and 2 way back in the day, and these systems are implemented even better in the most recent version of the game called Fantasy Star Online 2. This version of the game, known as PSO2, released back in 2012, 2012, eight years ago, in Japan only. I like that game series so much that I was willing to learn the Japanese language just to play the game, and I was making some hella progress until they announced that the game would be in North America, and to my surprise, it was going to be on Xbox way sooner than I anticipated. So, threw the Japanese textbook out the window, booted up Fantasy Star in North America, and I've been grinding it ever since. And since I'm playing it every day now, holy shit, it blows my mind how such an old game just gets it. And this is why I feel extra burned when I play a modern AAA game and wonder where the respect for player time and investment is. Don't get me wrong, Destiny has had periods of time where they got this balance in strides, but lately it's lacking severely. So this is just me respectfully pointing it out and saying that I am spending my time somewhere else just because they do hit that balance pretty well right now. I'm still going to play Destiny. And when Destiny improves to the point where I feel that balance is struck, between casual and hardcore investment and universally having your time respected, I'll play it a little bit more than I'm already playing it, but I'm not going to stop playing PSO2. I waited far too long to be not playing this game. I have a mere 11,000 hours in the Destiny series so far, and I know people with over 25,000 hours in Fantasy Star Online 2 alone. Nobody plays a game this much if they don't enjoy it. So I'm just saying I hope that the entire gaming industry can maybe take a look backwards at what all games of all different genres were doing right and not try to recreate the wheel. Some systems were good. I know that the gaming communities at large have grown to like different things like the rise of Fortnite being considered a competitive game, whereas other titles that are much more built from the ground up to be competitive like Quake Champions just hasn't been getting the attention. So from the game developer point of view, I don't really blame them considering that what seems to resonate with these modern gamers is a little bit different than what it used to be. But at the same time, I know that there is a portion of the audience that maybe vibes with some of the things that I mention in these videos, and I hope that over the course of the next few years, they start speaking up so that we maybe get some more fair systems and games, but that's just me.